<laughs> so the next speaker comes all the way from Toronto in Canada. And it's, I, yesterday I was checking her CV on LinkedIn, and it's quite interesting because he says, marketer, maker, entrepreneur, DJ, salsa dancer and teacher, but most of all, chief happiness officer at Maker Kids. Jennifer Turliok. Chief happiness officer is great. I want to have a chief happiness officer too. Hello. Oh, great. Hi, everyone. My name is Jen, and I'm the co-executive director of Maker Kids. We're one of the only kids maker spaces in the world. And today, I'm going to tell you about how to remake the world by making with kids and how we're working on doing that. So today in the world, there exists a lot of different problems. At the Singularity University program at NASA, we group them into eight areas, including global health, water, energy, environment, food, education, security, and poverty. How are we going to solve these problems? Well, unfortunately, over 80% of workers are dissatisfied with their work, and one in four people are experiencing mental health issues. With these two things going on, it's pretty hard to do work that's awesome and that changes the world. Yet everything around us that we see, including companies and buildings, was created by humans. So the main way that we can solve these problems is by increasing human potential. So how can we increase human potential and have more real innovations like this Google self-driving car? Well, humans are said to have more chance of reaching their potential if they have a good career fit. And that's said to be made up of a mixture of what you're good at, what you like to do, and what the world needs. And to me, the three elements that are required to achieve this are first, confidence, second, skills and knowledge, including self-knowledge, and third, opportunities. So the way to maximize the chance of finding and securing a good career fit is by maximizing each of these three elements. And how can we do that? Well, childhood is the most formative stage of a, of a person's life. So the best way to do this is during childhood. And if you can convince someone that they're a leader when they're a child, they'll carry that with them for the rest of their life. Whereas it's much harder to convince an adult who's 45 that they're a leader when they've spent their whole life thinking that they're not. How can we get more people like these? The CEOs, of, the founders of Google, the CEO of Amazon, the founder of Wikipedia, and more. Well, actually, each of these people has something in common in their education, and I'd like you to take a moment to think about what it might be. You're probably thinking that they all either graduated from or dropped out of an Ivy League university. Well, that's actually not the case. The main commonality that each of them have is they went to Montessori when they were children. Thank you. <laughs> For those of you unfamiliar, Montessori is a school system that was actually invented right here in Italy for children ages two and a half to seven. It's, it involves self-directed learning and discovery for long blocks of time, as well as collaborative learning, no grades or tests, and materials mainly in the areas of math, language, music, art, and science. This is a typical Montessori classroom. It's called a prepared environment, where there's lots of stimulating materials that children can choose from. And teachers are seen mainly as observers rather than what we would typically think of as a teacher. And Montessori has been extremely successful. Edison, Wozniak, Erickson, Alexander Graham Bell, and more were all supporters of Montessori. And when the founders of Google were asked if having parents who were college professors influenced their success, they instead credited Montessori. Larry Page said it was part of the training of not following rules and orders, of being self-motivated and questioning what's going on in the world and doing things differently. And Sergey Brin credited his willingness to go out on his own to Montessori. Will Wright, the inventor of The Sims, said it taught him the joy of discovery and that it's all about learning on your own terms rather than a teacher explaining stuff to you. 
And Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, used to get so engrossed in his activities at Montessori that teachers would literally have to pick him up and move him on to the next activity. So it's no wonder that by age five, Montessori students test better in the areas of reading, math, and executive function, or the ability to solve problems in a constantly changing world like the one we live in today. Yeah, there's still a number of barriers to kids doing the kind of high-tech making with the tools that are becoming more popular today. One of the reasons is that many of the technology activities available to kids at schools and extracurriculars are basic and step-by-step, -step, like this spice rack. It's, you know, spice racks are great, but it's not exactly the type of high-tech tool that kids might use in their career, and it's very basic and prescriptive and step-by-step, -step, so it doesn't allow for much creativity to be used. Secondly, although there's hundreds or even thousands of adult hacker spaces around the world, which were mainly born out of the desire to share costs around these high-tech machines, very few of them offer activities for children. And that's mainly because they're not sure how, there's liability issues, and they're not necessarily set up for supervision or mentorship. So in the absence of access to adult hacker spaces, the main way kids can access things like 3D printers is through their families purchasing them. But we all know that 3D printers and these types of tools are pretty expensive. So for all these reasons, Maker Kids was created. As I mentioned, it's one of the first and only kids maker spaces in the world. We work with kids three and up. And like Montessori, we do self-directed learning and discovery as well as collaborative learning. But instead of math, language, and art materials, we're using 3D printing, electronics, and woodworking. So I really see it as Montessori for the 21st century. Here you can see our makerspace. So it has a possibility wall with all different types of tools and materials that kids can use freely. And this is a three-year-old using a drill. Uh, which is pretty cool. And I think the picture shows really well how we think of our instructors, which is more so as mentors who are there to support the child and make sure they're safe, rather than telling them what to do or doing things for them. So these are some of the topics that we, that we do in our activities, including 3D printing, electronics, woodworking, Arduino, Minecraft, robotics, inventions. Toy hacking is a very popular activity. It's where kids are able to smash apart brand new toys, which they take great pleasure in doing, and then put them back together in order to create a new toy. We also do rocket launching, where kids can create rockets and see how far they can launch them. Jewelry making, sewing, candy and food making, chariot building, where kids can create chariots that they can actually ride in programming, crafts, and robot battles, which we're actually going to have at Maker Fair Rome. And we do this through our nine main offerings. The first is Kids Open Shop. It's a three-hour window where kids can come in and make whatever they want with the help of our instructors and mentors. It's $20 plus materials as a suggested donation, but it's pay what you can. So it's really inclusive. And similarly, we also have teen open shop and adult open shop, which allows us to reach new demographics and find new mentors. We also have Minecraft drop-in. Minecraft's a very popular video game, and we use it as a gateway to things like 3D printing. So kids can 3D print projects that they created in Minecraft. And we have after-school programs, which are 10 weeks in length, like robotics and inventions, themed workshops, summer camps, like this picture of a toy and game inventor camp, birthday parties for both kids and adults, and we've started to do more and more external events, like 3D printing at the Textile Museum of Canada. And these allow us to reach new audiences and also to support our Pay What You Can programs. So this is our recipe. The first element is a dedicated space where kids know that they can be safe, be creative, and have autonomy. And we've seen that they really take ownership and do things like tell other kids to clean up after themselves or to act more safely with tools, which I haven't seen elsewhere. Secondly, real tools. We give kids the ability to use soldering irons, saws, glue guns, things that are quite dangerous. And if they ask us if we can do something for them because they're too scared or they're not sure how, we generally say no and help them learn to do it or become more comfortable with it or find another way to achieve their goal. Thirdly, process over product. 
So we emphasize that it's okay to fail, and experiential learning, so learning by doing. Um, so instead of telling them step-by-step -step instructions, we help them, we advise them to try and figure out how to do it themselves, ask other kids, research it online, and we choose to celebrate the fact that they're making, not just taking home some shiny object that they've made. It's also interest-driven, so kids choose what projects or challenges they're going to do. Um, we find that if we tell them what to do or how to do it, they quickly lose interest. Kids teaching kids. Kids are really smart these days, and they're the experts in things like Minecraft. So we have kids teaching classes, and we also encourage them to teach each other within classes and share their knowledge with, with what they've learned. And kids also teach us. They know more about Minecraft, for example, underwater robotics than we do. And we also encourage them to share this online so other people can benefit from their knowledge. Another element is exhibition. So each program has a presentation to the parents, which kids get really excited about. And it helps them to organize their thoughts, because they know at the end of their project, they'll have to explain it to someone. And finally, community. So we connect to the Toronto community, the Toronto maker community, and the global maker community through events like this and through participation in online discussions. So here's some of our results. I think this tweet sums it up really nicely from a mother. She said, going to maker kids this afternoon. My daughter says, I'm more excited than Christmas. I've been looking forward to this my whole life. And after she came, and it was as great as she imagined it would be. Thanks again. I think this is one of the reasons that we've had hundreds of kids go through our program since we started a year ago. And we've had people, regulars coming in from as far as an hour to two hours drive, and people emailing from all over the world asking if they can have programs in their cities. We've been featured by a number of press outlets. And another great result is good behavior. So a number of kids come to us whose parents tell us that they have severe behavioral problems and they act like little devils in school, but what we see is them acting like little angels. And I think that this is because we treat them like adults and they live up to that. Secondly, they're having fun. And finally, they're in the presence of seriously dangerous tools, so they know if they goof off, they could hurt themselves. Something that I'm really proud of is that we've started to get more and more kids coming to us who have mental health diagnoses, such as Asperger's, autism, ADHD, or severe anxiety. And parents are telling us that they're using Maker Kids as a form of art therapy for their kids, where the kids act and feel better both during and after the programs. And I think this is because making allows you to express yourself, to feel power, to develop social skills when in, in a community, and also to be recognized for creativity in an area that's not traditionally recognized. Normally, arts, writing, and music are the main forms of creativity that are recognized. And the most exciting result is that kids are making awesome stuff. This three-year-old created a 3D-printed bow tie with LEDs for his dad for Father's Day. I mentioned underwater robots. Imagine if kids under 10 are able to create this, um, what they'll be able to create later on in their life. And if they're able to see themselves as creators rather than consumers, what sort of impact they'll be able to have on the world. I love this Steve Jobs quote that says, when you grow up, you tend to get told the world is the way it is, and your life is just to live your life inside the world. Try not to bash into the walls too much. Try to have a nice family, have fun, save a little money, but that's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact. Everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it, you can influence it, you could build your own things that other people can use. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. Imagine what type of impact people can have if they learn this as kids. So our next steps are we're planning to open up a retail store above the makerspace so we can have new income streams, longer opening hours, and so kids can purchase materials to use during our activities. And we envision a future we have, where we have chapters of maker kids all around the world. So if you're interested in having kids making activities in your city, please come talk to me during the weekend or shoot me an email. And you'll also get the chance to try out our activities. We're having a robot battle this weekend. So kids will get to dress up our robot platforms with uh, cardboard and balloons and pointy objects and then try and pop the balloons of the other robots. And if we have time, we have a video to show you that uh, you'll be able to see the inside of Maker Kids and what it's like in Toronto. 
Thanks. About a year and a half ago, we got this permanent location and we renovated a uh, studio workshop space to uh, teach all these skills to kids so they could learn about electronics, about sewing, woodworking, robotics, even cooking stuff so that they can uh, be creators instead of just uh, consumers of technology. We have an entire basement full of tools, all other kinds of appliances, and then we get ideas and then we make this stuff. It's awesome. So we run uh, after school classes, uh, we run weekend workshops, we do this summer camp. Um, there's several other summer camps we do too. The past couple of days um, they've been at Maker Kids here using our tools and, and uh, materials to actually build the physical parts of their, uh, of their toys and games. There's a lot of technology in our lives now and uh, we can either be ruled by it and just consume what comes our way or we can actually be the creators of it. Grazie.